To this day, the only item of clothing used by the Dani Dugun warriors is the halim. It is a hollow, dried tube made from the fruit of a plant that men grow in a special place on the edge of the village. When the halim reaches the necessary size, the man harvests it, then heats it over coals in order to completely remove the fruit's center. After this, he hangs it over the hearth of the men's house. As a result, the halim becomes dark in color, which is the desired result. New halims are made to commemorate significant events in the village, weddings, wars, and funerals. This morning, the natives of the Kurulu village were excited and anxious. The village guards had noticed a young warrior who, moving under the cover of bushes, was trying to reach the field where the women were working. All the men gathered together and held a council of war, where they discussed the measures to be taken to protect the village and its dwellers. Some of the older warriors, realizing how difficult it would be to re-establish peace, suggested postponing an armed conflict. The chief had to make the final decision. He tried to convince his tribe to forego waiting and to act immediately. But seeing that many of the warriors did not agree with him, he suggested asking the advice of the mummy. The fifth keeper of the mummy, Agate Mabel, received the chief and attentively listened to what he had to say. Much time has passed since we have been ruled by the great chief who was mortally wounded in a war of tribes. Before he died, he ordered that his body be preserved so that even after death he could look after his people. The mummy spoke, prepare for war. Weapons are kept in a special place. One of the main weapons used by the Papua natives in warfare is the spear. It is heavy and long, made from hard varieties of wood, and it does not have a spearhead. One of the most common weapons for hand-to-hand -hand combat is the axe. The shapes of the axes are very diverse. Many of the handcrafted axes are quite beautiful. The axe head is made from stone and is sharpened and polished. The stone on which the axe is sharpened is generally sandstone. For added effectiveness, water is added. The axe handle is made from various kinds of wood. It is carefully polished. For the axe head to be secure, it is wrapped with banana leaves and in addition, tightly wrapped with a specially prepared strip of rotang, which is interwoven with colored straw. Wrapping the rotang strips around the axe head, the warrior pursues two goals. The axe must be beautiful and dependable.
the shape of the stone axe head is different for every tribe, as are the ornaments on the strips that secure it to the handle. Because of this, it is always possible to determine where and by whom a certain axe was made. Before going to war, the warriors of the Dani Dugum insert decorations made of two joined together boar tusks into their noses. Putting on the traditional head decorations is also an important part of the ritual. The warrior's arms above the elbows are decorated with bracelets made of dog's tails. The frame of the chief's head decoration is made from rotang that is decorated with the fur of the opossum, the feathers of the birds of paradise, and the cockadoo. It is secured on the back of the chief's head with two pieces of string. chief's neck is decorated with necklaces. One of the necklaces is the vanimo, which is made from nasa shells and symbolizes nobility. Another is mekak, made of large shells. It is presented to a warrior for killing an enemy. The warriors paint their bodies with the traditional Dani Dugum designs. The best warriors of the tribe take part in a traditional war dance, imitating an attack on the tribe's enemies. Captivated by the rhythm, the dancers, decorated with tails made of birds' feathers, attack their invisible foes. The war dance serves as a warming up exercise and psychologically prepares the warriors for victory in the coming battle. War is a constant satellite of the traditional Papua society. A successful armed encounter assures the stability of the chief's position and raises the prestige of the victorious tribe. Wars are fought for the right to possess power, women, and domestic pigs.
On a religious, mythological level, warriors pursue the goal of receiving the favor of the gods that live by their side, that control the lives of the members of the tribe, their illnesses and deaths. Often, wars waged were the aim of returning the favorable attitude of gods, which was lost through the theft of pigs or women and could only be returned by the killing of enemies. During the dance, the warriors imitate cutting off the heads of their enemies. This custom has been preserved in several hard-to-reach regions of New Guinea. The natives believe that a human head is the receptacle of special spiritual powers that can be transferred to its new owner. For the Papua natives, cannibalism is a magic ritual action aimed at the enemy as well as at their fellow tribe members. They are convinced that by eating the enemy's body, they receive a part of that person's strength. The constant killing and cannibalism are regarded by the Aborigines as an indispensable condition of the normal life of their society. The song confirms the warrior's preparedness for battle. The chief gives the last orders before the attack. did not encounter any resistance. They did not expect only one person to be hiding in the bushes. This senseless killing did not bring them any satisfaction. In order to end the growing conflict, I convinced the chief to return the body of the dead native to his tribe and took the responsibility of paying the ransom myself. The relatives of the victim went down to the river to perform a ceremony of mourning called Bisi, which includes putting mud on the head and body. A small black bird with yellow feathers is the symbol of death in the Dani tribe. This is why, as a sign of mourning, women cover themselves with yellow mud. The funeral ceremony can last for several years. 
One of its goals is to gather together the relatives and neighbors of the dead man for the exchange of pigs, food, and other things. There are no strict rules on how to perform the funeral ceremony. Everything depends on how far away the relatives of the deceased live. All of the funeral rituals are aimed at pacifying the spirits, who are very powerful, especially in the body of a warrior killed in battle. The scale of the ceremony and the amount of gifts correspond to the status of the deceased. this period, the village is called Varekna. Before the arrival of guests, the men prepare a funeral fire in the center of the village. a special ritual net into which the ears and tails of ritual pigs will be placed. In the course of singing the funeral song, the men and women present tell of the outstanding merits of the dead warrior. Near the funeral fire, a special place is prepared and decorated with nets and river shells. Here, the body of the deceased will rest before it is burned. This is where ritual stones will be placed. These stones contain the sacred force called Vusa. Moving or even touching these stones without need is severely punished according to tribal law. In front of the men's house, on top of the stones, a long strip is laid. It is hand woven and decorated with cowrie shells. It points in the direction of the exit from the village and symbolizes a bridge between the living and the dead. And it is supposed to ease the transition from the world of the living to the kingdom of spirits. Relatives covered the body of the deceased with pig's fat and mud.
burnt on the fire, and his spirit will never return from the kingdom of the dead. Two days later, the female relatives of the dead warrior cut off their fingers as a ritual gift to the dead man's spirit. The father of the deceased, to show his grief, performs the Nosuk ritual. made from bamboo, he cuts off part of his ear, and then puts mud over the bleeding wound. child is considered a good omen that life in the village goes on. The first several months of its life, it is never left alone. Whether she goes, the mother always takes her child carrying it in a special net that hangs from her head. A child's tears are a tragedy for its mother. This is why it is fed as soon as it starts to cry. All the members of the tribe are very attentive and caring to small children. saying farewell to my friends, I was remembering the tiring journeys through the rain over cliffs and swamps, the days I had spent in their village, the smiles on their faces, our complete understanding of each other, especially in those rare moments when I had the opportunity to glimpse an alien, hidden world, to look into the very souls of these people and see their fears, hopes, and their desire to live. In the New Guinea jungles, you can still witness bloody rituals and armed conflicts, but generally, the Papua natives live their everyday lives and raise their children. Having found their place in nature, they have become a part of it, and our common responsibility is to preserve it for future generations. <laughs> <laughs> 